facts. We just we just did that. Let's move forward here. Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as cannon fodder. Now, who the heck would say something like that? A well-known elitist, a highly accepted New World Orderist by the name of Harry Kiss, excuse me, Henry, by the name of Henry Kissinger. Many of you know, well, many of you have heard of Henry Kissinger. Some of you may never have even heard of him. There are others who've heard of him, but don't really understand how he fits into all this, but know that he's mentioned something about the New World Order. Let me tell you just a little bit information concerning Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger has long been an integral figure in U.S. foreign policy. He's held positions in the Nixon, Ford, and Reagan administrations. He's an author of over a dozen books on foreign policy, and Kissinger was also named by President Bush as a chairman of the September 11th Investigatory Commission. Yeah, that's a joke. So the same Henry Kissinger again stated that the military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as cannon fodder. This is someone who, again, he's, he has high-level contacts. He's considered uh, an authority when it comes to foreign policy and many things here in the U.S. And he's taken, his words are taken seriously by many in the U.S. government for years. He's also stated his desire, his aggressive idea, already being played out, by the way, of establishing a new world order. Let me show you some other leaders that you may recognize that is also in favor of establishing a new world order. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. The affirmative task we have now is uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it was a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the order. The beginning of a new international order. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. That this crisis, in the way that has developed, will require some kind of a world government. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see uh, a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think the new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. 
we have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities. And there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. Well, during the, during the context of Saddam Hussein, which he handles so superbly in, in a short-term sense, we kept talking about a new world order. Uh, and, and, and then President Bush, at the end of that, of that war, promised he would give four graduation addresses, four commencement addresses, describing that new world order and what America's role was going to be in it. Turned out he gave one of those addresses and canceled the other and talked about something else. That's what, because they weren't ready yet. That in fact, we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. And I surely believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. And this present window of opportunity, during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built, will not be here for open for too long. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. Are you optimistic a global system can happen from what we've heard so. a new world order is prophesied in the bible uh the lord makes it clear through the prophet daniel that the new world order uh will is what is going to be part of or will bring on the great tribulation is what is going to be used as a platform to bring in or usher in the antichrist um and it's going to be such trouble that the world has never seen, that ever has is or ever will be again, according to Jesus' own words. Uh, the, the, the prophet Daniel spoke uh, when God gave him many visions and dreams, and when, he, when God sent an angel to help and, and, and interpret and give understanding and meaning of these visions and dreams that Daniel was receiving, and uh, the Lord clearly showed him this new world order. Daniel, you can find this uh, in uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 7 verses 23 to 26. Daniel chapter 8 also in verses 23 to 26. You also want to read Daniel chapter uh, Daniel chapters 11 and 12 because that also coincides with this final hour. Coincides with the times that we're living in and in conjunction with the new world order. Uh, also take a look at Revelation chapter 13. That talks in more detail concerning the new world order. And you're going to see how the book of Revelation chapter 13 matches up amazingly with Daniel chapter 7 and 8 and 12 and, and we gotta remember something here these prophecies are given approximately 600 years apart from each other there's so many more things to say but I have to I have to end this broadcast I will end it with this the Lord is clear in the book of Revelation that all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast this Antichrist this false system this new world order system and it will be mandated in the entire world. It will be a satanic system. It's already been on the scenes for quite some time as far as the uh, uh, Illuminati. It's, it's a Luciferian type system. It's a, it's, a, it's a demonic agenda through the Freemasons. It's, it's satanic again. It's a new world order. It all coincides into one. It's, it's a new world order. And the New World Order does consist of three entities. It consists of three main governments. It's a one world government, one world religion, and one world monetary system. And so all those three things is going to take over the world. <clears throat> and just as I was stating, the Lord is clear. that says all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast, except, I praise God for the except, except those names who have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. Do you have an ear? If you're watching this broadcast and you've stood with me this far, you absolutely have an ear. 
And the Lord is calling you for you to surrender your life to Him so that He can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because there is deception that's already on the scene. The prophet Isaiah spoke. He said, Woe to those who call good evil evil good, who exchange sweet for bitter, bitter for sweet. He says, Woe, well, cursed are those who say good is evil. God, get them out. He's no longer welcomed in the U.S. Armed Forces or schools or in the U.S. <clears throat> get them out. They're calling good evil. They're calling evil good. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive, we do not forget. Expect us.